So we're just to finish the week with the drop works I've got here with Lewis, we're going to just chat very quickly about the runs that they've gone to offer at this precise moment. As you can see, we've got, well, technically we've got five here. There's three on the market so far, but I'm, I'm just going to let you, I'll probably you, but I'm just going to kind of let you kind of lead this. So let's talk about the first one. What is Cleardrop? What, you know, what can people expect from that? What is it? Cleardrop's ready to go. It's an unaged rum. Um, it's... It's all about distillation. It's about clarity yeah. of distillation. It's a blend of four different rums that we've distilled. Yeah. It uses both our cane honey and our molasses. Wow. It uses every yeast strain we're playing around with here. It uses muck and under, all three of the stills, and it's fermented right from a whole range of, of time. So it's a real blend of everything that we're capable of doing here. It's not vodka. It's not bland and clear. Yeah. It's It's got flavor in it. But it's really approachable, very mellow, and super soft. So essentially, unaged rum. Yeah, forty-five percent alcohol. Forty-five percent. So for the average consumer, what would you know? Why would they? I mean, let's let's go beyond me that loves white unaged rum neat anyway. What what's this kind of rum for? Is it cocktails, mojitos, neat? Like, what are you marketing here? This this is a product that's I view as very much like your everyday your everyday rum. Right. Okay. Funk Drop, in comparison, is full of it's much more full of flavour. This is really delicate, but got really intriguing flavours in it. And this goes really well with things like apple juice. Goes well with okay. tonic water. Ooh. Goes well with grapefruit tonic water in particular. Ooh, no. um, but I just love it with cloudy apple juice yes. and maybe a splash of elderflower. Elderflower. And that's cordial? Elderflower. Elderflower. Like sparkling elderflower. Sparkling elderflower. Could, could do a bit of elderflower cordial, okay. but if you do, maybe a squeeze of something acidic in the top, like a lime or a lemon. Interesting. So, you know, again, it's the classic sort of unaged thing, but, you know, your thackeray mojito kind of generic kind of rum. Yes, but so, so blend, see, that's what I didn't actually realize. I've blended four different. Yes, yeah, so I've blended four different rums. Wow. Good. So there's complexity to it. It's yeah. Quite, try and neat to, to see what we've got going on. First, you'll see how soft it is, even though it's 45%. And second of all, you'll see all those bits of the, the flavor in there. But um, it goes really well with, with, with apple juice, as I said. But in fairness, the flavor's in there. You'll know if you're drinking this with Coke compared to Bacardi and Coke. You'll know. You'll know. Um, you'll you'll get the flavors. It's softer. It's it, it's it's just different. So then, to so go up then, because most people are just naturally assume the funk drop. You've mentioned it is a, a stronger version of that. Yeah, no. We've already discovered earlier this week in videos that it's not. Yeah. So what is that funk drop? It's 100 percent cane honey, no molasses. Right. Although the dunder that goes into it comes from a molasses. Wash okay. run, so there is a hint of molasses you note there, but it's f we ferment cane honey with our wow. wild yeast strain, and we allow we do that over a longer period of time, so it develops a lot of flavour. The esters in it are much higher than than in clear drop, and we distill it exclusively on the double retort still, which encourages esterification, generates a lot more aroma. So it's a lovely aromatic style run. Think like the the little sister of the big jamaican rums okay that, it's got i well, like that yeah well that, that is how i view it because it's not as big as 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 the big jamaican rums but it's got a really nice oiliness to it it's quite elegant but it's still in that same vein it's got the it's got the esters there but just on a, a sort of more gentle way so it's 63 percent, but it's it's very soft and very oily and it works incredibly well in something like a pina colada um mm -hmm. Supercharge your daiquiri with it. It's a great fun drink, but also I, I think it works really well with the sort of creaminess of a pina colada. Thing I, I definitely add in here, not, I'm going to do this time separately as well, but I, if any of you have followed me on social, you'll know I drink that neat at that parrot. I, I think that is, I don't know whether I'm just abnormal and love my stronger rums, but I just think that's a glorious white unaged sipping rum it's just lovely flavor i love that shows the quality yeah we're able to do well. it's a 63 percent abb yeah cane honey 100 cane honey and i think i need to revise my answer that i did on one of your uh all right things of because that's amazing cane honey. Yeah. uh versus for a blend of four four different in marks i mean they on the clear drop wow uh is it right so the, yeah these are wild yeast strain as well wild juice yeah right so it's right. I was going to say, is it then worth talking about that? But these are the three that are on offer at the moment. Yeah. So wait for this one. 
spiced rum. Ooh. What spices are you using to <laughs> set me up? <laughs> Basically, what is the base of that? Let's talk about the base of that first. Yeah, so the base of it is it's 100% molasses. Yeah. Wild yeast strain again. Right. Goes through a longer fermentation, develops lots of esters, lots of potential precursors for esters. And we distill it through the column. Right. So we allow for the potential for a lot of flavor, but we run it through the column to produce a lighter body, lighter style of rum. Right. So it's got flavor, but it's sort of cleaner on the palate, if that makes any sense yep, at all. I get it. Um, that's the base. Yep. And then really simply put, we flash age it with with French oak chips yeah. and American oak chips, both of which have been heavily charred. We're we talking what? Little, little chips? Little, little, char little, little shards little, of wood. Little shards of wood. Little like shards of wood. In your whacking them, I'm, I'm assuming you're whacking them in like a net or something. Yeah, we've made like a ginormous tea bag and tea put bag. it in. That, yeah. yeah, that's the way. And the alcohol strips out a lot of the, the flavor within the wood. Right. Because, the, because they're chips, you get a larger surface area, so it yeah. infuses really quickly. So all the color in there is natural from the wood. You don't have any colouring to this. Wow. Um, I, think, I think the close-up will kind of see that as well. Yeah. So that's the natural colour. Yep. Uh, I'm talking about the rum. So what what are we spicing it with? We don't add any spices. And what? We don't add any spices. Yeah. So all the flavour in here is developed through the, the through the production process. We don't need to add flavours because the yeah. flavours in it, there are plenty of flavours in here. And there's lots of spice notes in there. We don't need to add vanilla because van vanillin, chemical compound, right. is found in American oak. So by aging it with the American oak chips, you get a vanilla note to it. By aging it with the French oak chips, you genuinely pick up a spiciness. You get a bit of cinnamon. This, this and, and from the fermentation, we produce apple. And, and the, so this is like apple pie, apple and ginger pie with, with, with vanilla custard. Wow. There's no added flavorings. All of those flavors are natural. Because I haven't even, you, this is version two, you said, or back yeah, two. This so I haven't even tasted this yet. I've tasted it with what's a black parrot, which yeah. is obviously virgin. Virgin? But uh, it, batch one. Batch one. Batch one. Yeah. So things developed. So could we, to dumb it right down, say that that's basically rum flavored with wood? Yes, that's exactly right, which is why we've called it a spice <laughs> drum, because we have flavored it. Yeah. We've flavored it with wood. Wood. Crazy. So it's both, it's, both a, it's both a rum and a spice drum. Yeah. And legally, you couldn't argue it's not one or the other. Yeah, I like that. So no, no sweetness added, no... no there, there, is, there is some sugar added okay. to this. And like, I'm not ashamed of that. Like, I don't like sweetened rum, but I think this is delicious. And this doesn't taste sweet. We've added a really low level of sugar to this yes. to be able to bring out some of those spice notes within but it. You want to... Are you open in claret? We can cut this out if not, but no one, no, no one at home will ever know. But are you happy to tell us how much sugar's in there? Or yeah, I don't actually know. Oh, you don't know? Well, we know we know how much we put in, but we don't know exactly how much until it's been analysed in a lab because okay. we don't have the equipment to tell. Okay, so it's somewhere between twelve and a half grams and fifteen grams of sugar per litre. Per litre, which, which to call it rum in the UK, not spice drink. Yeah. To call it rum, you could have forty grams of sugar. In yeah. So this is 12 million people realise that. Actually, people go by the EU laws. Which yeah, I know. 20 France, but it's 40, isn't it? In the 40 in the UK. So essentially, rum flavoured ah, with wood, which is absolutely <laughs> no different to 90% of rums out there. Yeah. So aged in wood. Exactly. So no flavourings. Yeah. No, no added colourings. No added glycerol. Just so a all these, bit of sugar. Let's just give you a shout. Some up here, we might as well give you a shout. All these are available to buy yep. from you online, dropworks.com, yep. wherever it is. Yep. Dropworks. Uh, okay. Other stores available in the UK as well. So that's what you've got out in the market. These three at the moment. Those yep. three. Very approachable. Yeah. Everyday rum, special occasion, occasion. really full flavoured, enjoyable rum. That's, that's my Thursday rum. <laughs> that's my Thursday black paragraph. So, sorry, Monday room. <laughs> oh, I love it. I do love it. So, okay. So projects to come. Yep. So we can talk about this because we've sort of semi got a bowl. Mm -hmm. One bowl. We have we actually got. This is the first. This is the first bottle of made of it. The first ever bottle. This is a prototype. Prototype. You can see the color. Yeah. So this is dark, dark drop. Dark. Yeah. Dark drop. So what's that? 
Dark Drop is a product we're going to launch in the autumn in yeah. October. We're right. going to launch it at Rumfest. Cool. It is celebrating the heaviest style British Navy style rums that uh, okay. there's, there's a category out there. So it works fantastic for cocktails. We've designed it to work really well in certain cocktails. Um, and it uses two different marks, completely yeah. new marks that are, are not involved in these ones. Wow. Um, okay. The first mark is a double pot distilled rum, which is heavier. You got a lot more of the molasses flavor coming over. It's 100% molasses, I should add. Um, and we use our wild yeast to ferment that as well. Okay. So there's a good amount of flavor there, but it's less about the esterification and more about the base heavy notes yeah. that you get from molasses. Uh, and then we blend that with, um, it's about a three to one ratio of like three parts pot pot yeah. rum with one part, what we're calling um, Project X. We basically wanted to see how high we could dial up the esters yeah. with a short fermentation when running it through the double retort and um, it's worked. We've had wow. help from some friends, wow. um, uh, industry friends that have done some interesting reading and suggested a few things. Um, so we started experiments there and created some really high molasses based esters uh, that we're now blending in, which worked fantastically well for this. So yeah. it's got the base notes that stand up in a cocktail, but then it's got the highest ester notes that punch through in a cocktail at the same time. So you've created this as, is it a sipping rum or are you thinking more of a cocktail mixing rum? Like what? I view, I view it as a, as a mixing rum. Mixing rum. It's 40% ABV. It's still very approachable. Yeah. It's still very soft, but what you've got in your hand- I was gonna say, so we can kind of- Is where you start to go next yeah. when you start to talk by like sipping rum. So what have I got in my hand? You have something in your hand that we're not gonna release, but we're gonna give away oh. at some point okay. to certain people to people that are following and people that are on our journey um people that have subscribed to our channel people that have followed us on you know yeah. sign up to our email list we're going to be giving liquid away right this is our first ever cask yeah we emptied it after just six weeks six weeks because we had such a hot june yeah in uh, in the sicillery this is this is so good you yeah. like this is basically it's the it's what became funk drop but in an in a in a um an STR cask that was American oak with Portuguese oak heads. Yeah. It's the first time it had ever been done. And it's produced just exceptional rum that didn't need a day longer in a barrel. So we took it out. Fantastic. So we don't have, we don't even have a bottle ready for it. <laughs> so we, we didn't know it was, we would have liquid, aged liquid in six weeks, but so, it's delicious. So with now that in mind, we're just going to finish this off in this note because that's not available. I've talked to you off camera about one year old and you've got three year olds yep. that you're gearing towards. Yeah. Is this now something that you think, hang on, we can do semi-aged? Is this going to become a rum, like, by the end of the year, next year, that you're looking to do, like, if we could do that in six weeks? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wow. And and I don't want to detract from what we're doing here no. with the core range, but there's, there's a lot of learning that we have to do as consumers. I'm counting mm -hmm. myself in that as to what age statements really mean. Yeah. And if I put six weeks <laughs> on the front of a bottle, people will think I'm mad. Yeah. But taste it. It doesn't need a day longer. Fantastic. And so at some point, we're going to release that. Almost like how in tequila, they talk about reposados. Reposado is a whole category of tequila, right? That reposados tends to be aged up to in around three months. That's not three years. And even in three, if I say three years, people think that might be quite young. That is fantastic. It's fantastic stuff. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. So that is the range. Uh, come look, as I've said to all this week, we'll end this video here. Come up, reach out to these guys. Come up for the distillery tour. Check them out on social media. Check out Lewis's own YouTube channel. Uh, it's all about drop works and, you know, just go and subscribe to that. Where do you do that? Lewis Hayes on YouTube. Lewis Hayes. We'll, we'll start all down then. Thank you so much for having me up here. I can't believe the transformation in three months yeah uh, so i'm like i am come up again before christmas and stuff but it's been a pleasure so on that note cheers thanks steve boom that was really nice mate thank you